Hello all, welcome to the WinDBG User and Kernel More Debugging Series at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Windows debuggers. Now there are quite a few number of debuggers on Windows. The first and of course the most well known is the Visual Studio ID which contains the Windows debugger uh, integrated with it. Now keep in mind this integration is only available WDK 8 onwards and is primarily aimed at device driver writers. Now the Visual Studio IDE with the integrated debugger uh, can go ahead and do both user mode and kernel mode debugging. Now I've tried kernel mode debugging using the integrated ID debugger but it's, it's too much of a pain to get it to work right. Anyway, the feature is there and hopefully in Visual Studio 15 and probably sometime in the future it might be more stable. Then we have the all popular WinDBG, right, or basically the Windows debugger, which is what we are going to use in this course. And this is a GUI based debugger, which can do both user mode and kernel mode debugging. Then we have KD aptly called the kernel debugger and the NTKD. Now, KD and NTKD are primarily kernel mode debuggers and do not do any user mode stuff. Now the main difference is that in the case of NTKD, a new window is launched while in the case of KD, it inherits the console window in which it is started. Now apart from WinDBG and you know to some extent the Visual Studio IDE, all the other debuggers which you see below are console mode debuggers. So moving on, CDB uh, called the console debugger is a completely user mode debugger and NTSD pretty much exactly like CDB is also a console mode debugger for user mode only. Now the key difference is NTSD again is launched in a new window while CDB inherits the window in which it is started. It's almost like NT, whenever you see the little N in there, remind yourself that this is going to start a new text window. Now, even though CDB and NTSD themselves are console mode, they are well capable of debugging both console as well as GUI based applications. So couple of important points I'd like to re-emphasize, as I mentioned, Visual Studio has the integrated Windows debugger, which can now do kernel mode debugging Windows 8 onwards, oh, sorry, WDK 8 onwards. And WDK, of course, as we've seen in previous videos is the Windows driver kit. Now WinDBG is the only GUI based uh, debugger of all the rest. Now KD, NT, KD as we said are alike and are kernel mode debuggers while CDB and NTSD are user mode both for console and GUI applications. And whenever you see an N, you actually know that this spawns a new window. Now one other thing if you've never done kernel mode debugging is that typically kernel mode debugging requires two machines to be running one of them is going to be what we call the host and that is going to be the machine from where we are going to go ahead and debug while the target is the machine we are actively debugging, right? So we've talked about all these debuggers, but where are they installed? So let's jump right in and look at a quick demo of some of these debuggers. Let me go full screen. Now on Windows 8.1, you could actually go to C drive, program files, scroll down and you'd see Windows kits, go to 
or you know you can even look at the older one for that matter and then go to debuggers and let's look at the x64 versions here they are right now there are a lot of binaries in this directory some of them of course are the debuggers which we've looked at and some of them are helper tools and utilities which we will use off and on such as you know the all powerful ad plus which is very very useful and many others and i'll give you a quick walkthrough of some of the more important ones in the next video so in this video let's go ahead and run uh, each of these debuggers right so i'm going to open up command window let's make this an admin prompt right just so that we are not constrained from debugging any process and let's change directory to this one here okay so if you wanted to first run win dbg you can pretty much type in win dbg and let's say we'd like to run and debug notepad you can just do a hyphen o notepad.exe now this will start windbg and windbg in turn will load up notepad so that we can debug it now notepad won't be automatically run what is going to happen is once we load up notepad windbg will stop at the very beginning of the application start and wait for us to do whatever debugging operations we'd like to so let me run this and there you go you actually see a lot of stuff happening on your screen so this says command line notepad symbol search invalid we'll come to what symbol files are and everything in just a bit uh, of course the next couple of videos not in this one then you have mod load different modules being loading we see notepad ntdll and a lot of other dlls and then if you notice we've basically gone ahead and hit what is called a breakpoint uh, which is basically in 3cc software breakpoint and we are waiting here now it might look like notepad doesn't exist but in reality we have loaded notepad and it's just that because we have stopped it right in the beginning the gui and nothing has been rendered yet so if I just hit a G and hit an enter, there you go. You'd actually see notepad running in the background. Now at any given point, we could go back here and basically hit the break button and notepad would be completely frozen. It's nothing we can do with it, right? We can't even go ahead and select it at this point. And then we could do different debugging operations. So you can hit go and notepad would continue running. So let's go ahead and exit. And let's close WinDBG. Okay. Now let's look at CDB. Now if you recall, CDB is going to be a console mode one. So if you give CDB hyphen O notepad.exe, we would basically see that again, this looks like all of those load operations right and all of these different debuggers actually use a common debugging library provided by windows underneath and really these are just different interfaces with different features to access the same common functionality and that is why a lot of stuff which you see pretty much looks the same so let's go ahead and hit G here again. And of course, notepad springs to life. If you notice the moment you hit G, a couple of more libraries or DLLs were actually loaded. At any point, if you'd like to break, you could just hit a control C and we would basically break on notepad. And if you'd like to quit, you can just hit a Q and there you go. The debugger quits and the debuggy notepad quits as well 
Now, we basically said that NTSD was just like CDB and all it does is spawns a new uh, console. So let's try that. If I try NTSD hyphen O notepad.exe, what you would actually find that a new terminal was spawned and pretty much the same thing is happening through this terminal. So if we hit G, notepad would spring up. If I hit a control C and a quit, then basically notepad would close and so would the NTSD terminal, right? Now, apart from this, we've looked at WinDBG, we've looked at uh, NTSD, we've looked at CDB. Apart from this, of course, you have the kernel mode debuggers and uh, you know this would be kind of difficult to run it on the same machine, but we'll just double click and see what happens. If you notice, it just says wait to connect, opened, blah, blah, blah. And all of this would make sense once we go into kernel mode debugging. So this is KD. And if you recall, we also had NT KD, right? And if you go ahead and run it, this would launch in a new window. Everything else pretty much looks the same. Let's close both these windows. Now for user mode debugging, which is what we are going to begin with, we will be using WinDBG. I'm not going to be talking about CDB or NTSD. You're free to go ahead and choose them if you like. Most of the command and syntax is pretty much the same. And if you prefer console mode debuggers because you love GDB, right? Which is something we've covered here at Pentester Academy as well. You're free to use it. Now, if some of you are curious about kernel mode debugging, uh, let's assume that if this was a machine we were trying to debug, of course, we'd have to use an external one to monitor this machine while kernel mode debugging is going on. Now, ideally, even before you do anything, you would have to set up this machine for kernel mode debugging. So we would use MS config or you can use BCD edit, go to advanced options, enable things like debug, uh, the debug port, baud rate, etc. Then on Windows 8 onwards, you might, in case you're doing device driver based debugging, you would have to enable, you know, the signing to be turned, the signing checks to be turned off or test signing basically to be turned on. So, a lot of those we will cover as and when appropriate. So don't worry, you know, you're in good hands here. This is going to be a good elaborate course on Windows debugging. Okay, fantastic. So that's all I had in mind for this video. In the next video, we are going to look at some of the helper tools which accompany all of these Windows debuggers. So that's all for this one. And if you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you and have a great day ahead.